Well, thank you. Um, nice to be here, nice to be back. And I want to tell you about a little known collaboration of Martin Gardner with two rather famous names in the field of mathematics. Uh, Paul Erdős and uh, Nicolas Bourbaki. So let's uh, see. Everybody knows of Martin's work with Salvador Dali and uh, Mandelbrot, and of course, the very famous numerologist, Dr. I.J. Matrix. But less well known is the fact that he also collaborated with Paul Erdős and Nicolas Bourbaki. In fact, it's so unwell known that I only found out relatively recently. Uh, here are some pictures of the gentleman in question. The one on the left is a little fuzzy because, well, everything about him is a little fuzzy. <laughs> but um, uh, I actually was Googling last night after I went home from the conference, and I was stunned to find in Scientific American, no less, a reputable journal, if I'm not mistaken, an article entitled, John Conway Reminisces About Dr. Matrix and Vorbach Key. So rather than try to scroll through it, I thought what I might do is just show you a little bit because there's actually a couple of video clips here. They're very short. So we'll see if I can uh, get them running here. And I think this is the first one. Stay at Martin Gardner's house every time I came to the States, which was sort of once a year or occasionally there would be a two year gap. And uh, I met lots of interesting people there. Uh, one time, uh, the two people I met were Nicola Bobaki and Benoit Mandelbrot. They were two very interesting people. Uh, Bobaki uh, wrote a standard multi-volume work on mathematics, and uh, Mandelbrot, um, well, he's chiefly known for starting off the discussion of fractals in, in real life, so to speak. He wrote a book called The, Co the Coastline of England. And uh, he was very puffed up and echoed. Oh, uh, yes, I don't mean that Mandelbrot was puffed up and egotistic. I mean, um, Bourbaki was uh, very proud of himself. Of course, he had good reason to be. He wrote this multi volume description of mathematics. It was very nice to hear them chatting together, I'll tell you. There are actually four videos uh, on this uh, w Scientific American webpage, and maybe I'll just show you one more. I think we might have time for one more, if I can find it here. I downloaded them so that we wouldn't have connectivity issues. So yes, let's talk about the Erdish one. Uh, Martin Gardner actually wrote a paper with Erdish. She has Erdish number one, in other words. As with anything of uh, uh, dishes. It's really rather deep and profound. Uh, it was, uh, it's published in a rather unlikely place, the Kurdish Journal of Mathematics. In fact, um, you might say that Gardner has a Kurdish number of one, too. So in the interest of time, I think I'll let you check out the rest on the web if, if you are interested. There, there's just four, four fairly short videos. But uh, I was kind of very surprised by this because I, I, I didn't really know about this. But however, you're welcome to look it up as I did. There's actually today, I just read on the A periodical this morning, that Erdish and Bacon um, actually <laughs> collaborated. This is not this well known, but it's, it's now on the A periodical, which is a website a very good mathematical website, so obviously it's true. And um, apparently there are outtakes from the uh, N is a number film that, that document this in detail. So Erdős probably has the smallest Bacon number and conversely. <laughs> Actually, looking around the web, I found some other interesting, interesting things today. The Chinese have been warning about the dangers of April Fool jokes. And this is actually an, a real press release from today. Um, and apparently, if we can get this retweeted 500 times, we're in big trouble in China. So if you're on Twitter, I would particularly encourage you to, uh, to tweet this so that we can be accused of sedition or something equally exciting. Actually, back in 1975, Martin wrote a very famous April Fool's column. If you don't know it, you should look it up. It's an absolute classic. Um, here's another one not approved by the Chinese media. This is a classic which I wonder if Martin knew about. It's from 1957, which is just after he started publishing in Scientific American and just after fads in the name uh, of science, fads and fallacies in the name of science became well known. 
So he would have loved it, but it was only BBC Newsreel, and he never set foot in Britain much, uh, so he probably didn't see this. I think he was in Liverpool once during, during his uh, days. But here's Martin's contribution to G4, G12. He, he did it all a long time ago, because he got 12 cover stories in Scientific American, and we've seen references to uh, one of them today, the Ulam Spiral, and the Game of Life, and many other great things. So these are all also worth checking out. Actually, Twitter is a good place to find out about Martin because the first Twitter account you should follow is WWMGT. That's what would Martin Gardner tweet. <laughs> and that was initiated in this room four years ago today. It was Sunday, the 1st of April, 2012. And there's also a Martin Gardner centennial account. And between them, they have uh, no more, apparently, than 4,449 followers. And if you're on Twitter, we hope you're following both. Here's a final contribution, Mandelbot's contribution. And this was actually cooked up in the last hour or two by Henry Siegerman and Craig Kaplan. Please give them a great round of applause. This is an awesome image. Thank you very much. We just tweeted that so you can get a nice high res copy by following us on Twitter. Thank you.